This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing coming straight up out of that DMV. You know what it is. This that Baltimore designer right here. Come on now. Come and show some love and show some support. Go online right now. CoolGreenClothing.com and make your purchase. Oh yeah, by the way, if you ain't cool and getting the green, you're in a way. And that's just basic. I, I. What's going on, YouTube fam? It's your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end here, the full story, and all the details in the case. For the day one fam, y'all already know it's all love. Thanks for tuning back into another episode. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. All right, now, we ain't gonna get too geographical with this one, because it's technically Anne Arundel County, not Baltimore County or Baltimore City, but everybody know that's close enough. So let's get right into the story. When you bring kids in this world, it's definitely a blessing. If you are young, for most people, it will slow you down and make you become more focused on life, because now you have someone else to take care of other than yourself. For a father, we hope we can provide for our kids a stable upbringing and protect them. Once they start getting older, you instill certain principles and morals in them, let them know right from wrong, so once they become a certain age, they can float through this crazy world unharmed and out of trouble. But things get tricky once your kids become a certain age. Around about middle school, they have friends start figuring out there's other things in life other than what you've been teaching them. And even if they stay on a good path, they are now around other kids who parents might have instilled other things in them that go against what you have been teaching your seed. Leading to little teenage conflicts. For example, you teach your son or daughter to go to school, be laid back, do your work, and stay out the way. A classmate feels your kid is a geek or a clown because they might be taught opposite. They might get in a little fight, nothing major. It's a part of growing pains. But when adults get into teenage beef, things mostly always go left. And on this episode of the Baltimore Way, we'll discuss a case of a man's attempt to protect his teenage son that turned fatal. 43-year-old Christopher Wright, who friends and family call Chris for short, and his fiance Tracy had been together for over a decade and had three sons together, in which they both went hard to give their boys a good life. Chris being a father, like most dads, wanted to protect his kids, spent a lot of time with them and instilling certain things in his boys. By May of this year, the family's hard work had paid off. They had a nice home in Brooklyn Park, Anne Arundel County, and their boys were getting older and doing good. Christopher would often post how good it felt to glance in his dining room and see his family eating dinner together, or how it was a blessing just to wake up every day and for his feet to hit the ground. On May 19th of this year, the couple's oldest son was 14 and attending Brooklyn Park Middle School. Dad, a young man named Trenton, had made friends with a few other boys, including another 14 year old. Somewhere during the course of their friendship, the two will fall out about $30. That day, the boys will get into a fight, nothing major as most young men do when they have a problem. At the school, Trenton returned home like a normal day, greeted his father, who was out front in the family's garden. Then he went inside to speak to his little brother. Not long after, a car pulled up to the family's home. Inside the whip was Trenton's homie, who he was just fighting. Two other teens and two adult men, including a 26-year-old man who was Trenton's friend's uncle. The five hopped out, walked to the family's yard, asking where Trenton was at, as his friend wanted to fight again. Chris, who was still in the garden, stated his son wouldn't be fighting. Before the uncle stated, we're going to run there and drag him out the house then so he can fight my nephew again. By this time, Chris got on protection mode. Saying his son was outnumbered, the uncle then told him, if he not going to fight, then you got to fight, and started walking towards Chris in the house. As his 12-year-old son watched from the doorway, Chris stepped back before throwing a punch, telling the group to leave his home. That's when they moved in and the fight started. 
Chris and the uncle would end up in the street before the man grabbed Chris' legs and pulled them from under him, causing the man to fall and hit his head on the curb. The uncle then began to hit him while he was down. As his 12-year-old yelled for his father, the group quickly realized Chris wasn't moving at all. They walked closer to him and saw blood. One of them screamed out to his 12-year-old son, I'm sorry, call the police, before they ran, hopped in the whip, and drove off. Neighbors called police, who responded to the scene to find Chris laying unconscious. He was rushed to a local hospital as they quickly realized he had brain trauma and was bleeding out. He went into emergency surgery. It slowed down, but they wasn't able to stop the bleeding. And unfortunately, the next day, Chris passed away from his injuries. Tracy and the family couldn't believe it. Neighbors remembered the 12-year-old boy screaming for his father as he was on the ground and Trenton feeling like the whole incident was his fault. As an investigation started, the school claimed the boys had been fighting all week, multiple times because Trenton homie claimed he stole $30 from his girlfriend. As the detectives looked at the video footage provided by neighbors, it showed the whole altercation. The car pulled up, the five jumped out, Chris swinging to prevent them from running in his house, and the end of the altercation in the street. A candlelight vigil was held for Chris. As the family grieved, it still wasn't a suspect in the case. It was mixed signals because as Tracy stated in an interview, Chris did throw the first punch, but he was just trying to protect his family. Then she stated her fiance went from working in his garden to losing his life in a matter of minutes. And about two weeks before the incident, he was just posting about how precious life is. As more information came out, police got a name for the uncle. He was 26-year-old Trevor Taylor. It was determined Trevor and the four others drove to the home and the person who slammed Christopher causing the injury was allegedly Trevor. So he was the only person charged. A warrant was put out for the man. Over two months would go by with the family grieving and starting to go find me for Chris. Eventually, Trevor was arrested and charged with manslaughter and assault. It was mixed feelings about the charges. Some feel it was self-defense before Chris threw the first punch, but others felt it should have been a hit charge because they came looking for trouble. Trevor is being held without bail on the case and it hasn't made his way to trial yet, so he is innocent and to proven otherwise. Rest in peace to Chris. I send my prayers and condolences to the boys and Tracy. This is a crazy situation. As a father of two teens, I can relate to protecting your family at all costs. I remember growing up fighting a lot and people just always said boys will be boys. When we got in our little situations, parents let us figure it out on our own. But lately, I've been seeing a lot of adults jumping in the middle of teenage drama. Some even bringing guns. But when you pull up to someone's home, things can get crazy. Unfortunately, Maryland doesn't have a self-defense law. Not saying I agree, but if Chris would have had a gun and popped Trevor, no one could have even been mad. When you go looking for trouble, sometimes you get what you're looking for. Unfortunately, in this situation, the family lost their protector. I know his sons is hurt, but for the 14 year old, it's not your fault a grown man jumped in the mix. I'm gonna leave this with a question. How do y'all feel about this situation? Do y'all think things could have went different on any parts of the incident? Let me know in the comments. Definitely be respectful. Yeah, man, crazy story. Rest in peace to Chris. I send my prayers to the family. I ain't gonna talk too much more about this one. Like I said, let me know what y'all think in the comments. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. Y'all already know it's all love, fam. This is another episode of the Baltimore Way. It's your boy Tony Two Times. I'm out.